Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you as we gather to lift up our prayers and praises to our wonderful God. Well, this is the busiest time in this congregation's life. In the next 20 or 25 hours, we'll have three totally different kinds of services. And today also happens to be the shortest uh, fourth week of Advent in the entire calendar because this morning we are observing the fourth Sunday of Advent, but this evening already we'll be celebrating Christmas Eve and then tomorrow, of course, the Nativity, the birth of our Savior. So hopefully you can take part in as many of those opportunities as possible. Uh, the service this evening begins at 6.30. The service tomorrow begins at our regular morning time of 8.45. And uh, one thing, if anybody would like to help in either the copy room or with um, cleaning, there are sign-up lists out in the entry area. I hope to have a um, flower calendar up next Sunday for 2024. Um, we'll see how the week goes. We begin then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the fourth week of Advent, and it is the last week before the birth of our Lord. The epistle reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him, to the only wise God be glory forever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. At the end of the road of life, of the world, Christ has promised many exciting things. The angels to carry us to glory, the splendor of the throne, the glory of the heavenly mansion, to name a few. God has made monumental promises of mighty blessings in store for us. These blessings are received through faith. Faith holds not only to Christ, but also to the promise of standing in the presence of God. These promises of God sustain God's people. Through faith, they have overcome persecution and martyrdom. Through faith, they have triumphed over long periods of sadness and sorrow. Through faith, they have laid loved ones into the ground to await the great day of resurrection. Faith is one of our Lord's greatest gifts to us. Faith states, that the right, uh, states the writer to the Hebrews, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Christmas and the birth of our Lord open a whole array of promise laid before us by our loving God, which we receive through faith. So it is fitting that one of our Advent candles symbolize faith. Join together in prayer, and I invite those who are able to please stand. Holy Spirit, we thank you that by your word and sacraments, you stir the minds of your people in anticipation of our Lord's return, that we may not forfeit your gift of glory and inherit hell. 
hold us firm in the one true faith, that we may hold fast to ensure. So when the Lord Jesus does return in glory, we may share with you in the gift of eternal life. In Jesus, Lord, who reigns with the Father in you, now and forever. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as your people, we take refuge in your infinite mercy, seeking your grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. And then he has set a tent for the sun, which comes light and bright, leaving his chamber. And like a strong man runs its course with joy. It is rising from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit.
Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is recorded in the second book of Samuel, chapter 7. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a palace of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. That night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their leaders, whom I command to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now, I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me, and your throne will be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join to sing the gospel acclamation. I invite you to please stand.
be bare is in her sixth month. For nothing <coughs> is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. forsake them. 
that he fulfills his promises to his people. Once upon a time, God's people were at the border of the promised land. The report that the spies had offered after surveying that land was favorable. The land is good. It's a land of milk and honey. Don't fear the inhabitants. God will give them as bread to us. This, their protection is gone. The Lord is with us. What did the people want to do to Joshua, Moses, and Aaron? Stone them. Two centuries later, God's people were inhabiting that land of milk and honey. The twelve tribes had received their division of land. The people of each tribe were married having children, and living out their callings. But there were problems, disagreements, even battles and wars. Why? Sin, disobedience, unbelief, even on the part of God's rulers. Judge Gideon was one such ruler. The former occupants of the land, where he was at, the Midianites, were harassing the Israelites. Gideon complained, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. Hundred years passed. There were no more judges, but now there were kings, in particular David. God selected David to become the second king of Israel after Saul became unfaithful to God. When Saul and his sons met a tragic end, David became the new king. A major concern for David was a permanent place to house the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When he expressed this wish to build a temple, the Lord responded that this responsibility would fall upon his son Solomon. Still, God promised David, I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great. These historic accounts prove that the God of Israel is with us. Emmanuel fights for us. What happens to this Emmanuel? Conceived by promise, this Emmanuel born of a virgin, Jesus Emmanuel, would be born in Judah and would die in Judah upon the cross. He would come for sinners to give life as a ransom for sinners, to redeem sinners, to save sinners. Only God with us in the flesh, Jesus, could do this, and he did. We need God with us, not a superman or a wonder woman to save us. We need someone begotten of God, as we just confessed in our creed. We need someone who loves righteousness and hates wickedness, always perfectly. We need someone to share in our flesh and blood, yet who can destroy the one who holds the power of death, the devil. We need a prophet and re deliverer greater than Moses, as we heard about this past Wednesday evening, a priest greater than Aaron, a rest giver greater than Joshua. This we have in Jesus. God with us sympathizes 
with our weaknesses, tempted as we are, yet, in his case, without sin. To him, we draw near to find grace in time of need. Our time of need is always great. Daily do we find ourselves up to our neck in our stupid sins, our willful sins, our habitual sins. We would like to think that we'd never be doubting or faithless, but we must hang our heads in shame. If Jesus in the flesh were with us, in the flesh all, all 1,440 minutes of the day, to what would he be privy? What would he see as he looked over our shoulders as we watched TV or we uh, surfed the net? What would he hear as we talked on the phone or had conversations with our friends? What would he know as we lie in bed at night, going over the events of the day or pondering what lies ahead? Jesus is Emmanuel. He is God with us, even when things do not work out as we plan. As a young woman heard a missionary share stories of danger and success, she knew God was calling her to be a missionary. She prayed about it and talked to people about it. She just knew God was calling her to be a missionary. She had no doubts in her mind. After graduating from high school, she studied to prepare to be a missionary at a Bible college. She graduated and was preparing to leave for the foreign mission just a few weeks before she was to leave, her only sister and her sister's husband tragically died in a car accident. They left four children. Her parents had passed away and she had no other siblings. So the children were entrusted to her care. She shuddered at the thought of these precious children, these four precious people being put into an orphanage. There seemed to be no way for her to live out her calling as a missionary, and she was devastated. But she took those four children and treated them as if they were her own. She was a devoted mother to these children. She prayed for them each night. She raised them in a caring, loving home. When the children were old enough to leave, she was too old, excuse me. She was too old to begin a career as a missionary. How could God abandon her like that? You might think. As it turned out, her sister and husband were not. Christians. So the children were raised in a Christian home. In addition, all four children became missionaries. So rather than just one missionary, five missionaries came out of that house. Jesus is the Savior, sent by God. Exactly what we need, Emmanuel. O oh, come, Emmanuel, and save us. Ransom us, lonely exiles. Let us rejoice in you who are God with us in this Advent time. Amen. Now may the peace and love of our God that pass beyond understanding guard and protect your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. Let us join them in singing the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs>
Grant healing to the sick and give peace to the anxious and dying. Comfort all who mourn with the certain hope of the resurrection. Today, especially, we bring before you Ethan, Clara, Alice, Alice, Glenn, Brad, Diane, Paul, Carol, Lorreen, Debbie, Jameson, Sherry, Will, Brian, Dan, Cody, Marilyn, Ken, Jane, Larry, Greg, Jenny, Karen, the residents and staff who are dealing with COVID at the Lutheran home and in other facilities, members of our armed forces injured in the line of duty, all affected by warfare, especially in the Middle East and Ukraine, and disasters, the family of Doug Bolden, and all whom we now mention in our hearts. Give them the knowledge of Jesus, their Emmanuel, who is with them in all their trials. Grant them health and healing in accord with your perfect will. Shower, O oh heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. That salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. O Lord of Lords, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. You make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. By his death, he has opened the kingdom of heaven and closed the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the, the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain faithful for his advent in glory at the last day. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear O Most High, we pray not as we ought, but as we are able, trusting in your mercy to supply us with all things needful and beneficial. Keep far from us all things harmful, that we may be kept holy and blameless to the day of Jesus' coming. As we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn will be What Child Is This? It is number 370. We wish you God's blessings as we will now continue with the service of Holy Communion. 